our lesson tonight. B R B. And one may think, what does that mean? And we're going to look at it. We're going to study it. And doesn't mean be right back. <laughs> the first place we're going to look is First John chapter three, verse twenty-three. And this is his commandment, that we should believe, there's the first B, believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave command, commandment. So, the first B is believe on the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You got to make sure your belief rests on Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Acts. Look at Acts. We're all going to do this scripturally. We're not stepping out of the scriptures. At the times of this ignorance God winked at but now commanded there's that word again command we saw the command to believe now the commandment of all men everywhere to repent so the R is repent believe repent chapter 10 same book, chapter 10, <clears throat> verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized, there's that word again, command, in the name of the Lord, they pray, then prayed, they tarry certain days. So we have belief or faith, repent, and be baptized, all commanded by the Father. You can't get this notion, you can't get this feeling, you can't just say this prayer, it's not salvation. You've got to believe, you've got to repent. And then you got to be baptized. That's salvation. Now, the belief or faith, Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith, Romans 10, 17. So then faith, that's belief, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It doesn't come by a chicken meal fellowship. It doesn't come by a potluck dinner. It doesn't come by a softball game. It doesn't come by a movie. It comes by faith and hearing, preaching, reading, the word, listening to the word of God. You've got to have a Bible, or at least have Bible verses like gospel tracts for salvation. Friend, if there was no Bible, there was no scripture present, and if somebody says this prayer, That's not, that is not salvation. 
Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, belief, it's impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, you're dealing with somebody who believes in evolution. Can a person that believes in evolution be saved? Not without faith in God the Creator. He must leave his evolutionary thoughts and ideas and come to the Bible where the Bible speaks about a creator. That creator God has a son named Jesus Christ. Can an atheist get saved? If he comes to the point that he acknowledges that there is a God I had a guy one time, he come up to me, he said, well, I'm an atheist. And we talked, and we talked, and we got to the point that really, I said, listen, at the end of that conversation, I said, you're no longer an atheist. He goes, well, what am I? I said, you're an agnostic. He goes, what's that? You kind of believe in God. You have left the idea that there's no God, and now you're thinking that some way, somehow, there is a God. But did you get him to say a prayer? Did, no. He has to come in his life to realize that he has faith, he has belief in God to be saved. I had another guy come up to me, and he honestly came up to me and said, listen, I'm an agnostic. And we talked, and we talked, and talked. He built up his, his faith a little stronger, but not yet saved his prayer. You can't get somebody to be saved by a prayer when they don't believe in the one to have faith in God. It's, it's like opening a children's manual and, well, I don't believe the automobile can get me here and there. You know? A children's manual is, you know, is, is designed to show you how to fix cars. So, 1 Corinthians, First Corinthians, 1, 21. First Corinthians, 1, 21. After that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So you go out there and you preach the gospel. We'll see that in a moment. To people who don't never heard the gospel. And they come to realize that sounds true. That sounds right. They know not God. They please not God. And the foolishness of preaching comes to save them to believe. Is that right away? No. No. You see, your modern church today, get them saved, get them saved, bring them in, bring them in. There are going to be a lot of people in hell. We're going to wake up in hell's fire and think, oh, wait a minute, I said it for you. That church, that pastor, that person told me to say this prayer, what am I doing in hell? 
Did you have any plea, any belief in God, His Son Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for you, the sinner? Well, no, I just said this prayer. Friend, that's the trouble with today's church. Say this prayer. Romans 1 16. Romans 1 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, it's Jesus. For it is the power of God, Christ Jesus, the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, to the, also the Greek. So you get somebody, they're in church. They say this prayer. They walk this altar. They collect 13 ducks. They swallow four goldfish. And... They don't believe in God. They don't believe in Christ. They don't believe in the power of the gospel. They're not saved. When they come to realize that they may not completely understand, but when they come to the power to realize they have sinned against a holy and righteous God and that the only means of payment, the only means for them to be free is through the sacrifice of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, upon Calvary's cross and his burial and the resurrection is the means of salvation. A guy walks the altar because his girlfriend is there, because her boyfriend is there, because mama told him that's not salvation. Salvation is Jesus Christ, the gospel, the power of God, and belief. Mark 16. 15. And he said unto him, Go ye into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know what the problem with the Great Commission in Matthew? You know, the church, the Great Commission, they run to Matthew. The Great Commission, they run to Matthew. You know what the problem with Matthew, the Great Commission? There is no preaching. Mark lays it out. You go out there and you preach the gospel, the death the burial and resurrection of the Son of God, the power of God, Jesus Christ. You know what's, you know what's black in today's church? Preaching. Oh, they'll teach you. They'll give you a sermonette. But they won't preach to you. And that's not just a preacher's verse, verse 15. That's all Christians. We are told to go out and get the gospel. We're not told to invite them to church. We're told not to bring them to a movie. We're not told to bring them to a fellowship dinner. We're not told to... We're told to give them the gospel by preaching. That's what we're told. That's Bible. But you can't do that in the line of the same church age. Because we'll offend somebody. Christians over the history of the church died by faggots. They died by torture. They died over the word of God, over preaching the word of God. They went to jail for preaching the word of God. The lot of the in church age today doesn't do that. I'll mention to people about me going on the streets and preaching on the streets, being the street free, and the preacher, the preachers will look at me like, you're an oddball. I said, excuse me, didn't Jesus preach on the street? Jesus preached on the beach one time. Yeah, Jesus sat down and taught the people in the treasury. Yeah, Jesus sat down and taught the people in the temple. Paul went out, he's standing there, here's his temple, the unknown God, and he preached.
2 Corinthians. If you're not doing what the Bible tells you to do, you're not doing it. I don't care what your system are. Second Corinthians seven ten. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but sorrow of the world worketh death. When you are in your heart a sinner, and you have come to realize that you are and have sin before a holy, righteous God, that you offended God Almighty with your sin, and you are sorry of repentance. And you ask for God's forgiveness. There's no, there's no means to go back and rechant. That's what that verse is saying. I have never been sorry that I repented of my sins before God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Never. Times I wish I'd done it quicker. I wish I'd never done this sin. But I thank God that I am able to repent to confess my sins, and he forgives and cleanses me. And there's no means to be sorry for doing it. There's a means of being I sorry I've sinned. And that I come in repentance to God. Luke. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Repentance is out of the churches today. Repent is to come to God In a U-turn mode of I am not walking that way no more. I am not going to do that no more. I am turning from evil. I am turning from wrong to do right. I have set my heart to do right and no more evil. I repented. I am sorry. I am in a change of heart. And you come to God and you just say this prayer and you're not sorry. You're not confessing nothing. Friend, that's empty believism. And except you believe and except you repent, you can say all the prayers you want, you're not saved. It's plain and simple. Acts 3. Acts 3, I think 19. 3 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance is required. Belief first, repenting second is required through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Anybody can get saved. Even worse, anybody can say a prayer. The Muslims do it. The Catholics do it. The, 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 
Seventh day Adventists do it. But if the prayer is not to God Almighty Jehovah, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, of the death upon Calvary, of the burial and the resurrection three days and three nights according to scripture if you have not put your faith and trust in the finished work of God through Jesus Christ friend you're not and you have not come to God confessing now listen when somebody with me is ready to, to believe. I will I will help him pray. I don't I said, listen, you right here, you ask God to save you, and you confess whatever sins you want. Whatever on your heart. I will not lead, I will not guide, I will not start the prayer. If you are truly, truly ready to be saved, you're gonna bow the knees and you're going to speak from your heart at the Holy Spirit how do you cry out to God for salvation. I ain't telling you nothing. I preached the gospel, gave the invitation, and if you truly want to be saved, your heart and the Holy Spirit that's going to come in you will guide and direct you through your belief, through your repentance to the Father. You say, well, that's cruel. I'm not out there to mark up numbers. You say, how many people have you led to Jesus? I don't know. I'll let God keep the numbers. I'll just keep preaching as best as I can. I think chapter 2. Uh, let me check this one. Uh, We'll move on. Um, all right, Luke 16. I lost that one. Luke 16, 27. He said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wilt send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them. We, they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets, the word of God. Let them hear them. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said, if they hear not Moses the prophet's scripture, neither will they be persuaded that one rose from the dead. Well, Father, you know, give them signs, give them a movie, give them something, give them popcorn. What about the scriptures? Oh, never mind about the scriptures. What we'll do is we'll have VBS. We'll have, you know, attendance. We'll give them a story time. We'll give them a snack time. We'll give them a playground time. And we'll give them very little scripture. We'll give them, a, you know, red team, blue team. And then we'll, we'll, we'll do attendance again. We'll send them home. Oh, little Johnny said he wanted to believe Jesus. Really? Really? Where was the scripture? Well, no, Tommy's bow. Was there scripture? Was there a story? Was 
Well, you're against VVS. I'm against improper VVS. I'm against programs that don't have description. They have a show like this guy wanted his, his brothers to see. He wanted them to see a show, but he didn't, you know, not the scriptures. And there are churches that go out and they decide when they go over to your house and they will tell you about the volleyball team, they will tell you about the movie name, and they will tell you about uh, you know the great pastor they have, but they will not carry a Bible, they will not have the scriptures. Are you gonna be there Sunday? Yeah, we'll be there Sunday. All right, look what no 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 And this is the importance of the King James Bible. The King James Bible is the Word of God, or it's not the Word of God. I believe it is the absolute authority of God's writing to us, the English people today, that there is no other Bible. And you got churches with Bibles that have no blood, no deity of Jesus Christ. They take out the salvation. They take out this. They take out that. That's not a Bible. And with these churches, they are leaving these, these, these Bibles of cut and paste. How can somebody get saved by the blood of Jesus if their Bible has no blood? The blood has been removed. Several versions have. Matthew 10. Matthew 10, 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Another, which we really saw about being ashamed, another sign of true salvation. That somebody has repented, somebody has believed and repented, is they're not ashamed. On April 25th, I put my faith and trust in Jesus. April 26th, I went to the church. I stood up and told the people what I did on Saturday. I went home and told my dad the best ability that I could that he was going to go to hell. I was not ashamed. Now of my Savior. And I began to tell people. I began to get gospel tracks out. I began to read my Bible. I began going to church. All after I believed and repented and put my faith and trust in you. Now, did I understand everything? No. Could I have given a lesson like I'm giving right now back in 1987? No, I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to find Acts or Exodus. First, second, third John. But I knew God. I believed God. I knew Jesus, and I believe in Calvary, and I knew I was a sinner, and I knew I was going to hell, and I didn't want to go to hell. Romans 10. Nine. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe, and shall believe in thy heart, not head, 
in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. There's, there's, there's the third part of the three parts of the gospel. Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he arose again. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, not head, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. When you speak about Jesus, and yet not ashamed of Jesus. For the scripture said, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. When you get out there, now I'm not going to say 100% of the time, I say, do, do you size people up? Yes, I'm sorry I do. Do you speak to everybody about Jesus? No, I don't. I'm saved. I'm not ashamed to do these messages for people to learn. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 36. As they went on their way, there came a certain came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? All right, baptism. Now we're reading the baptism. Now this verse is taken out of your modern Bibles. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, this is removed from modern Bibles. Believe it with thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered, said, I believe, this is removed out of Bibles, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That verse 37 is removed out of modern Bibles. And to remove the believeth is to remove the first part of salvation. And there are churches out there, all right, be baptized. Be baptized. There's no salvation in baptism. So he put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. No, it's the Son of God. It's the very first verse he really did, remember? He commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, immersion, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now, I'm going to say something today that churches too far don't do. The preacher of that church, the pastor of that church, went down into the water with the baptizing. baptizing the person to be baptized. Yet today, they, they, they build these things, and the pastor is not in the water. That's not scripture, and that's not what we're going to talk about now, but that's not scripture. I don't know what God's going to do with that. The person that got saved wanted to be baptized. All right, he goes, no, he did right. The pastor didn't do right. Eh, see what happens at the judgment, but. Next chapter. Acts 16. Acts 16, 20. Um, don't want that much early. Verse 30, that's what we want. It's verse 30. Acts 16, 30. He brought him out and said to Sir, what must I do to be saved? Oh. They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou, be, thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him, The word of the Lord, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. To all that were in his house, he took them the same hour that night, washed their stripes, and was baptized. Believe. Preaching. Believe. The 
in baptism. Baptism comes last. Baptism comes last. After belief, repentance, then baptism. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Belief is a principle before, so don't you baptize someone before they believe, before they repent. Don't do that. Acts 2 38. And Peter said, Repent. And be baptized. Believe, repent, baptize. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Believe. Then re repentance. And then baptism. There's a process of order. Luke seven twenty nine and all the people that heard him heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and Lord rejected the counsel of God against himself, being not baptized in him. They disobeyed the order. John 3. Jesus said unto him, Very, very, I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time his mother's womb and be born? Jesus says, Very, very, I say to you, except a man be born of water, mother, the water broke, water broke, and of the Spirit, God, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Acts 22, 16. Now Paul believed. Why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized, wash away thy sins, call on the, upon the name of the Lord. Alright, so what is baptism really? Well, let's, we're talking about somebody who got saved. Truly got saved. They truly believed, they re truly repented. You can't see that, Jesus said in John 3. I can't see you get saved. I can watch you say a prayer. 
But I don't know if you're really saved. I don't know if salvation really happened. It's not for me to know. You know, God knows, and the devil knows about whether you truly received Jesus Christ or not. Now, a baptism will be to the fact is you are going to make a public show, a public testimony that, yes, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. The very fact is that Jesus Christ died and was buried. And you go under the water and resurrected three days and three nights. You come out of the water. You go in that water. You, you are typifying the, the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that you have put your faith and trust in Jesus. In the finished work, and you want to show all this, look the public testimony that I have of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And as far as myself, is repentance. I am dying to self. I am going to be buried under the water. When I come out of that water, I'm going to live a new life. Repentance. Repentance is when you come out of that water, you're going to live for God. Does it last? No, it doesn't. And thank God we have First John 1, is it 8, 4, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because we're going to sin. You're not perfect. Now, is baptism for Hebrews 4.15? Is it for sins? For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the Feels our feelings, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. That's Jesus Christ, verse 14. Jesus Christ had no sin at all. Jesus Christ was sinless. Luke 3, 21. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heavens opened. All right, if salvation is for sinners, for sin, Jesus Christ, the sinless one, was baptized. To say that baptism is for sinners, the cleansing of sins. Well, you make Jesus Christ a sinner because Jesus Christ was baptized. Jesus Christ did not need a baptism for sinners. He was sinless. His baptism began his earthly ministry. Now, uh, Luke 23. Luke 23. 39. And one of the malefactors which was hanged rolled on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answer rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God? All right, there's the fear of God, seeing thou art the same condemnation. There's the repentance, for we indeed justly and receive the due reward of our deeds. There's repentance, but this man has done none of it. All right, he's announcing, this man is announcing he's a sinner, he's guilty, Jesus Christ is sinless, and he said, Lord, he said, Jesus, Lord. Remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. Here's a confession. Jesus said, Very I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. <clears throat> that repentant thief was never baptized, and yet he is salvation. Well, what if I never get baptized? Okay. <laughs> 
You can't go into the mission field without the baptism. I mean, you can go and you can disobey. If baptism means of salvation, no. It's a public testimony. It's one of the things of the church besides the Lord's Supper. Now, you can go to church and they don't have the Lord's Supper anytime, no time. All right, you're still going to heaven. That's on the pastor. But if you refuse to be baptized, really no, there's no obedience. Yes, you can be saved. Yes, you will be saved. But it's proper to be baptized after you have believed, repented, then be baptized. Don't reverse, don't change the order. 